talk. Yeah, yeah they'll be you, at seven and a half percent. But we'd be at seven. You don't think those conversations are being had beforehand? I think they are, okay. but they weren't expecting this that, this amount of inflation. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I I don't know. I'd like to see if yeah they're actually losing money on. They're in on business. Yeah. Some do you lose. They're in business. Stuff. What's up, everybody? Here we are with Generation Ash. Yeah, so today we're just going to do an open discussion. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of stuff changing in real estate right now in the housing market. So we figured we'd just talk about everything we had going on because Dylan's got a couple projects he's working on. Carlos got a couple projects he's working on. I got a couple of flips and rentals that I'm working on. So we might as well talk about it and see why we're keeping the ones we're keeping and selling the ones we're selling. So, Carlos, I mean, I know you're working on three of them right now. Is yes. Is there a reason why you're selling versus keeping? Yeah, so uh, I'm just getting out of doing two um, that I think both, no, one we intended, actually both, we intended at some point to sell, um, but we decided to keep, and now we're in the refinance phase. Nice. Now, the reason that I bring that up is because um, the price point that we bought them at, the kind of renovations that were involved, and where we saw kind of the rental market going, just kind of made it more attractive for us to keep it as a rental, especially after we discovered um, a, uh, a commercial lender that could lock in the rate. Because that was a big yeah. thing for me, where it was like, if I have no control over the rate, then I, I don't really want to set it up as a rental because yep. it's probably not going to cash flow. I'm probably not going to get all my cash out. So I was able to lock in, I was able to start fixing those houses, realize what was going on, lock in a rate. It was a 60 day uh, lock. And now I'm kind of at the tail end. I've refinanced, or I've, I've nice. had both of them appraised. So I'm kind of about to come to a close to, to both of those. Nice. Um, now, the ones that I'm working on now, one I bought a while back, it was always intended to be a flip. Yep. So that's gonna stay as such. And then the other two that were, we closed on uh, late last week, those we intended as a flip for both of those with the possibility of one turning into a rental but it's only the possibility it's like a secondary exit because of uh the acquisition price so we're getting it at a pretty decent price yeah we think it can appraise really well depending on uh, knowing how our our uh, renovation costs are going to be i think we'll be able to pull all of our money out but the big factor is going to be okay now I have to rock, uh, lock rates again, yep. and will it still make sense at that point to keep it? If it does, then I'll keep it, and I'll end up locking the rate before I'm done with the renovations. Otherwise, I'll probably just end up selling it so that we could be a little bit more cash heavy for the coming months. Don't you change your renovation style based on whether you're keeping it or flipping it, or do you literally do the same exact finishes, same exact granite, whatever, whether no. you're flipping it or, or renting it? So the finishes are what's what changes, and by that time you'll know if you're selling yeah, or yeah. or yeah. keeping. Yeah, because finishes for me are probably like in the last like two weeks, three weeks of like a renovation. Okay. This house needs new plumbing, it needs new electrical. It doesn't have central, so I'm gonna put central, and I I want central on all my rentals, yeah. and it sells better if it yeah. does have central. So like, there's a lot of like not opening finish. walls or anything. No, no. So we're not opening yeah. up walls. That's always a decision that I struggle with if i'm renting it i don't want to ever open walls but it's no then, point yeah i know but yeah. then like if i do decide to sell it last minute like carlos is saying it's just like damn now i should have i should have opened that wall yeah. yeah yeah so there is some things that are kind of tough whether yeah one, one factor decide. for one of them that i am probably gonna have to decide sooner rather than later is there's a an enclosed screen area room uh that's part of the house it has foundation it has oh, concrete okay. it has everything so like we could build that out to be a third bedroom. Oh, okay. But then we have to run electrical. Fine, yeah. I can do that. Run duct but work. Yeah, so there's like a few things that make it work as a third bedroom, but then in order to get to that space, it's weird because you have to go through the kitchen and then into that bedroom. So it's like, uh, do we do that? Do I create another hallway? Like, what do we do in order to make that a proper? Because that, I think that regardless, I think it'd be a good investment to make as like a rental or as a flip maybe yeah because you'll get better appraisal value for sure absolutely oh you would yeah, yeah. and yeah. even for resale value a three bedroom is yeah. gonna sell for yeah. a lot more so i think that decisions could go either way yeah rental yeah, or yeah. so yeah so so that's kind of where i'm at um the other two nice. are definitely gonna be as flips 
Um, and again, that's just in order to be a little yeah. bit more cash heavy nice. in preparation for the next six months. And you made that decision to flip them from day one. Yeah, one yeah, of them yeah. from day one. Yeah, the, the two from day one. The okay. third one is... And the other thing I should point out about the, the, the third one is, yeah, it could go both ways, but it also fits our profile really well okay. of a 2-1, sub-1,000 square feet. It's in the neighborhoods that we have... Uh, that and that's we, what that you like to rent. For yeah. To keep. And it just... Because it, it makes sense. It's so much easier to turn. It's so much easier to, like, find tenants for. So, like, it fits our profile, so that's why we want to keep it as an option. Nice. But then... We do want to sell because then we also want to be a little bit more liquid yeah. for if things happen. So see, I think that's the cool part because we're all in different areas, or I mean, because we're in total different zip codes mm-hmm. and areas to where a two bed one bath I don't think would interest me as much for the rental side because I want three in ones. Mm. Just because we get way higher where we are south of Richmond, we get higher rents for three bed one bath. Yeah, there's a lot more demand. And there's a bigger huge, yeah, a lot more demand those. down in the suburbs because yeah, yeah families. Yeah. Stuff I mean, like I that, get man. so many phone calls from random people being like, "Hey, do you have any uh, houses?" I'm like, "Yeah, what are you looking for?" They're like, "I'm looking for at least a three bedroom, like all the time." All the time. And I don't because I most of mine are two. I hardly yeah. have any that are three actually. But there's a ton of people that look yeah. for the three. And bedroom. I would say that out of all of mine, I only own two two bedrooms. All oh, the wow. rest are all three to four bedroom yeah, houses. Uh, yeah. I think the majority of mine are, are yeah. two. Two. Yeah. yeah, I think like That's 95% crazy. of mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just works for the city. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of younger people, colleges, I mean, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Small couples, yeah. no kids, whatever. And and mind you, I, I don't, I, this is to, a total prediction, but like, are people going to downsize? If something happens, Possibly. recession happens, all that, they're going to downsize, get into a smaller unit, they're going to want to save a few hundred bucks instead of going from a... No offense to the threes, but like, oh, of course. I mean, the fours, fours go to the fives. threes, yeah. the fives so go like, to the fours. You're still exactly. kind of like in a catch all position, yeah. right? So, um, now you don't want to get stuck with the five bedrooms because not too many are going from the six to the five, yeah. So, or bigger luxury homes, I mean, yeah. I have a five bedroom now, a four bed, two bath, and yeah, those are still high demand, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Dylan? What are you working on that's different compared to what you normally would have done? Uh, so, well, basically, oh, different right now. Um, yeah, because I know, I mean, I don't know if you want to tell everybody, but you got a house that you were planning on fixing up and either renting or selling, but now you're going to keep for yourself. Oh, that's yeah. Huge. Yeah, mean, so when I first bought it. Well, I was, my, when I first bought it, so when I first bought this house, uh, the Ashland house, it's in Ashland, and uh, when I first bought it, I was either going to flip it or keep it as Airbnb. Yeah. And now I'm actually fixing it up and everything, and interest rates are moving. And by the time we have it on the market, probably in two months, because we got yeah. caught with by the inspector for not pulling permits and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that on here, but whatever. <laughs> it's only happened <laughs> once. You, you always pull permits, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, I, I just forgot that one. You yeah, forgot. Yeah, Your yeah. assistant didn't do it. Your yeah. contractor yeah. didn't do it for you. <laughs> Damn contract. <laughs> <laughs> we get flagged by the city. But uh, when I first bought, I was planning to do Airbnb, but now we're actually going to be moving into it. Um, so I'm going to have to nice. refinance that one. And the rates are still high, even if I do have a personal loan, if I can Doesn't get approved matter. for that. Yeah, it does, yeah, I'm still going to be in the 6%, which is what I could have got probably two months ago with an investment loan anyway. <laughs> Maybe one month ago. Yeah. I mean, the rate lock that me and Carlos got was at 6 and a, six and. An Quarter. eighth, yeah, yeah, six and an eighth or something. As an investor loan, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking <clears throat> because we locked it, and then what just happened recently in the last week of them raising rates, do you think they're losing money with our loads? Uh, maybe, but they could have closed a week ago, and yeah. Like, yeah, but they didn't close a week ago, they, yeah, they're closing after no. the fact that the rates are now do you really seven think and a half. That they're losing money because I feel like. Well, they took the risk by rate locking, but they didn't close. They didn't. They haven't sold the loan or anything. So now True. they have this underperforming six and a one. There's got to be. There's got to be some way. There's no way a bank loses money. Let's be real. Nobody is losing money on giving loans. Maybe we did have to pay to rate lock it. So they. Took, okay. So they took the risk of. Of you know, they, they want an extra money up front yeah. to say we don't think interest rates are going to go much higher than this because obviously they could have yeah. if we didn't if they didn't offer a rate lock yeah they'll be at seven and a half percent but we'd be at seven you don't think those conversations are being had beforehand I think they are okay. but they weren't expecting this a, this amount of yeah so I I don't know I'd like to see if 
Yeah. They're actually losing money on They're in on business. business. Yeah. Some do you lose They're in business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. in some, I mean, yeah, millions of loans. <clears throat> There's no way them losing well, They might take away rate lots or... pretty soon then. If if they are losing That's money possible. on them. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like six hundred dollars to pay for the labor. Yeah, it was point three five points yeah. Yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same. And I think for me, I'm the flips that I went into it thinking I was going to flip, I'm still flipping. And then the ones that I'm keeping for rentals, I think it changes it a little bit. But for my long-term goal, I want to keep. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so I, I don't think I'm going to change that. And I'm under the median home price by probably close to 50 60%. So they're going to still cash flow. They're still going to create good rental properties. Like I was saying earlier, the three ones are kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah. And both of these two I'm working on are three ones and in a great area so in then, Chesterfield. So then to me, to me, that sounds like you're, you really think there's going to be increased value. Uh, yeah, I do. That's good. Inflation. Well, long term. Long yeah, term. long term yeah, wise, I know that's going to yeah. be because two, both of them are in great neighborhoods, close to everything, highways, school systems are good. But and short term, of, you you might expect a little little downward, or what do you think? So in short term, it could go down, but I'm in you it for really the long care. to where yeah, yeah, I don't really that's care. I'm, I'm going to keep both of these houses for 10, 15 years, yeah. minimum, because yeah. they fit exact. They're brick ranchers that fit exactly into my. Mm. portfolio and into my mold your, your buy box yeah my buy box yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah me, that's, that's awesome i mean it's a, it's very different is it yeah but i'm changing because last year daryl flip everything and not keep anything and now this year i'm like eh, do i really want to deal with people maybe not wanting to buy that house because it's too much or so forth so now i'm deciding to keep it and i'll just float the bill for the next 10 years yeah. And it's not really floating the bill because I'm going to have a renter in there that's going to pay it down. My equity is still there. It's, yeah. yeah. So then are you afraid that um, you might have to leave money in these deals? If... Uh, so I'm probably going to. Yeah. And I, I've done that the last six months. I've left a little bit in there that I normally probably wouldn't have, but I had the cash. So I left it in there because I knew over the long haul I'm going to get it back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll probably leave 10 grand or so into them, which... Let's be real. If you can buy yeah. a house and have ten grand in it, yeah. you've it's, done good. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not the full Burr method, but it's close. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's videos out there right now that are saying the Burr method uh, dead. going extinct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And it's because it it's harder. Is. Yeah. It's harder and harder well, to stay. I'm cha- I guess from one that we're working on right now in Richmond, I'm. Yeah. I'm teetering on whether I should keep it now or sell it because of interest rates. Yeah. 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 So. We'll see. I mean, we won't be done for like another three months, so we'll decide. So we'll decide, decide then. Yeah. yeah. And now, how is too soon to decide? Because for me, I make that decision before I buy. And now, granted, I can always change it, but I make that decision before I buy, and I try to stick to it. Yeah. If yeah. I, I like can. to do that too. Yeah. Because if, because I'm known for teetering back and forth, and if I go into it not knowing, then I'm probably gonna make a decision that I'm not gonna like in two years, and which is sell. Yeah. Because I've known, I've been known for selling. Instead yeah. of keeping, and I've sold a lot of houses last year that I probably should have kept. Yeah, yeah. But I looked at, hey, we can sell for thirty over asking. Let's just take advantage, and I got that cash, and now I'm starting to leave some of that cash into some of these deals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. 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 No, it's changing I, yeah, every day. Yeah, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. Now there's still opportunities out there. Like, I'm refinancing one. Uh, it is going to be a proper burr and I am going to pull I'm nice. going to be able to pull money out which is a very unusual thing now but the deals are still out there so to, to the point that we're making is like if you keep an eye out and still kind of yeah. on the prowl things are going to become available because people are going to start to get a little weary and yep. they're going to yeah. pass surely up sell on the or, deal or, yeah they're yeah. going to be like oh no I don't know I only <laughs> buy because I've said this before for certain deals that have been brought up to me recently it's like that's not in my buy box that's not my comfort zone. Yes. Yeah. I would usually, but it's not my comfort zone. That's not yep. the neighborhoods I like to buy in. And it's, it doesn't mean that those aren't good deals. That's no. just not somewhere where I want to be. Yeah. I don't want to explore something new yep. right now. And just I recently. into my comfort zone. Yeah. Just recently, I picked up a house that got passed up by three inv- investors. And three investors that I know personally, I don't know why they passed it up. But I got an inspection done, and I know the house is structurally sound why they passed it up it just might not have met their buy box yeah and that's all it was it yeah. probably didn't meet it but for me it fit right into what i had going and i knew what tenant i was going to put in there yeah 
I have a list of tenants that want to move into my property. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the, the analogy that I like to always associate with that is like the best, uh, the best um, quarterbacks always work from the pocket, right? Yes. If if it's hitting the fan and the defense is tight, yep. And the offensive line is tight on the other side, and there's a lot of pressure coming in. What do they do? Stay in the pocket. Stay in the pocket. Right? And yeah. then throw. Yep. Right? Because otherwise, if you start scrambling yeah. and you start running that's when out. Get sacked. Yeah. That's when well, it happens. Yeah, yep. you start getting nervous and you start kind of thinking outside and trying to be creative. Yeah. No. So j- just go back to what your comfort yeah. zone is, what you know your strengths are, and just kind of lean in on that. And I think over time we've built that up, right? But the people that are out there that are just trying to get started, that it's still not too late. Yes. Because it could still be a good opportunity if the right deal comes around yeah. so just over analyze me but maybe be a little bit more conservative but yeah. s- still make offers because you the fact that you're out there trying to make offers and the fact that you're out there still on the prowl makes yeah. you more aggressive than the person that's going to their shell right now and it's like you know yep. what screw this i'm selling i'm yeah. done mm-hmm. because i don't want to get burned yeah so then they'll sell to you and then you have the thicker skin that's like all right i know this is a long-term investment yeah and to your point this is my bigger plan. Let me buy. Yes. And in five, ten years from now, it won't make a difference. Yeah. What happened? Yep. Right. So. And I think to close it out, keep hustling. That's what we preach. I mean, keep hustling. And if it fits into your buy box, who cares what everyone else thinks? Because yeah. everyone has a different plan. Carlos has a different plan than I have, and Dylan has a different plan than I have, and the same with both of them. So don't think that your plan is going to be the exact same as someone else. Because what fits into their buy box might not fit into yours, and they might be more leveraged than you plan on being. So mm-hmm. definitely stay in your lane, keep doing what you're doing, always buy good deals, and don't pass up a deal if it just. And now, granted, pass it up if it doesn't fit into your buy box. Yeah. But if it does fit in there, don't pass it up just because someone else told you, mm-hmm. "Hey, I wouldn't buy that," or "Hey, I wouldn't." <laughs> spend all your money today they don't know what your long-term goal is in 20 years you know what your goal in 20 years is going to be and if you don't i would highly suggest sitting down and writing those goals down yeah because we all have written them down and now granted they change they're supposed to change so every year and every month they're going to change but i think if you just stick to that and you buy the houses you're comfortable with you won't go wrong yeah. So. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Yes. <laughs> this is checking out. Generation. Hey!